Hello and welcome to yet another again, another of my locomotive reviews. Um, one of the things which is prevalent with this review is I'm drinking beer at the same time. So occasionally you might hear a glug, glug, glug. Anyway, um, on to the model. This is the uh, NRM limited edition uh, Flying Scotsman with the um, as you can clearly see in wartime black um, this is actually as modelled in 2011 rather than a uh, authentic wartime version as on the other side it's got um, 502 and interestingly what surprised me with this model when I initially unboxed it is it actually has separately fitted deflectors um, I've currently not fitted them because it would a require gluing because unlike the other model it doesn't actually have the um, mounting holes for them um, it's interesting I've currently got this locomotive DCC fitted um, the chip goes in the tender and there's a socket here which um, this little cable plugs into um, DCC performance is good it's um, I borrowed the chip out of the uh, Railroad Mallard actually, um, which does the job really, can't complain. I've, I've got no current plans to fit this with sound or smoke or anything like that, so yeah, I'm not going to bother. Um, another interesting thing is the original Flying Scotsman tender during the war was actually a non corridor, I think it was fitted with a non corridor in about. 37 I think it was um, yeah so like I say this is as model from 2011 um, the model originally cost me a hundred and forty nine pounds to which just before release they d reduced it to 146 and I missed out on the price reduction but doesn't matter ah. anywho um, as we all know, well, what's there to say about Flying Scotsman? It's been here, there, and everywhere. Um, I've got to say one thing though. I'm going to avoid picking this one up too, uh, a little bit today because I picked it up to put it on this track and I actually snapped one of the cables. The first bit of bloody damage I did, to, actually, no, second bit of damage I did to this. The first one, um, all right, I'm going to pick it up, but I'll be very careful. Um, first thing I did was I actually managed to knock one of the um, steps off um, yeah it uh, fell off my shelf and dropped about three feet onto carpet um, so I got off quite lightly really the valve gear is extremely fine um, I, I simply don't like touching the valve gear on the newer models because I'm very clumsy and um, if you look carefully on my other models there is actually slight kinks and um, yeah especially considering the price I paid for this one as is I don't want to mess about with it too much um, interesting unlike um, Tornado this actually has a plastic cartazzi um, and in the box there is actually a separate wheel set with the flange on um, for if you're just gonna sit it on the shelf and be a bit boring with it um, Yet uh, the other separately fitted detail was the um, brake rigging on the front. Um, doesn't take long to do. Uh, five minute job really. Bit of tiny spot of cement glue, and it'll stay in. Um, yeah, and the. Um, The markings on the front are accurate as per the 2011 livery when it decides to focus, 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 please focus. Alright, I'll just move it back a bit. Oh, uh, with number 502, class A3, and um, with the York shade marking. Um, yep, yeah, it's. Can't say more about that. Like many of the um, Hornby models, 
sprung buffers and um, the cab detail on this is actually pretty good um, you can nearly make out the actual numbers in the um, on the dials in there which is quite impressive in my words um, you see like the brake handle um, and that it's actually a left hand drive as per the prototype um, although the Scotsman wasn't converted I think till the early 50s to left hand drive um, being like most Eastern Region engines originally right hand drive um, focus there we are and double chimney as you know what I've damaged three bits in this the annoying um, I actually knocked the nose dart off um, although I, as I've only just mentioned it I tend to forget that it's actually there so it's a bit of a low priority um, yeah um, the covers over the roof are actually movable it's a nice little detail that um, I don't think any of my other locomotives have do that actually even my more expensive ones let's turn it around to see the other side um, you'll also notice I've actually fitted the additional um, steam pipes and what have you on here but on second radius corners it tends to push it a bit so um, I've actually got them slightly angled out to counter that um, and there's the additional rod there um, as you can see on this side it's uh, 5x2 which um, was the first numbering scheme I believe with them um, being replaced with by 103 and then after nationalization the um, 60 was added to make 60103 um, which he carried through till 1963 which the late Alan Pegler returned her to uh, as close as to her uh, original form really um, yeah uh, the DCC performance as mentioned before is actually it's quite good it's very very smooth um, as a DC loco it was also very smooth and it's actually quite weighty as well um, unlike um, the Legends Flying Scotsman I've got which is a little bit lighter and as such it um, tends to slip a little on with a heavy load. Um, yeah, uh, so I bought this from the NRM. I pre-ordered it on literally as soon as I got home from the preview weekend in May 2011. Um, back then it was expected to be on the rails within a few weeks, but alas, um, not so far, but if a job's worth doing, it's worth taking time on. And um, the team at the NRM mm. <sighs> deserve all of our patience. And she'll be back on the main lines by the start of next year, easily. Um, yeah, I think that's all I've got to say about this one. Um, thanks very much for watching. And I'll be doing the next review today actually. Thank you and goodbye.